What's up, everybody? It's your boy Mars Man here, and we're here talking about episode four of the Halo TV show. And as always, we like to start off with a non spoiler review, giving our good, bad, and final rating for the episode. And then in the second half of the video, we want to dive into the spoiler discussion where we like to talk about some major plot events, as well as either praising or just straight up ragging on the overall episode itself. But before we jump into the review, if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. So let's now jump into our good. And when I look at this episode, I feel like I really did like the choreographed action scenes that they had. And it, it was probably better than anything we got from season one or uh, Halo 5 uh, video game, because I felt like this was when you see season one, it was almost like a horrible dance routine. Um, that you knew that like exactly what was happening. They like choreographed, oh, I'm gonna come in with a hurricane hook. And then like you could see it firsthand. This one, it felt more brutal. It felt more like like actual like war that was happening around you. And I felt like they did a very really good job at at setting that up. And even the green screen, the, the animations of green screen were definitely, you know, I'm not saying it was perfect, but at the same time, it, it did, it was it's better than anything action wise we saw with season one. I mean, there were some decent action scenes that we saw in season one, like the midway point in the first episode, uh, even the last episode to a certain extent. But this was way better than any of that. And I felt like they they are at least if they are messing up, they're hiding their mess ups a little bit better in this season compared to anything we saw in the first one. Like the elites don't look like straight up monster trucks like they don't, you know, there, there's actual like weapon firing. Like, sure, I can rag on some of the weapons, but they, you know, they there it looks a little bit. Right, I feel like that's kind of what I was looking at. So, uh, with that being said, Hockey, was there a good that you liked from this episode? Yeah, I mean, kind of just what you had said. I'm just going to double down. Really, it was the action um, and the way the you know Covenant looked, and not, not to spoil anything, but you know you saw it in the uh, in the trailers. Um, it looks good when when they are there. Um, it looks good. That's kind of my favorite part of, of all the episodes when when the Covenant's there. I mean, when there's some good action. So, um, and you know, the writing just in general uh, has gotten better, even though we'll go into certain things about this episode that we saw, but uh, you know, the, the writing and the interaction between, uh, you know, John, I'm not even gonna say Master Chief, John and, and uh, you know, the, the other characters as well has, has always been for the most part in season two so far, pretty good. Yeah, and uh, Angelica, what was your good you felt about this? Yeah, I agree with you guys. Uh, the set pieces of this of these battles, and and we know, you know, this is a lower budgeted. I say low budget, but last season was almost like a hundred million. So you know, we talk about that as being low budget is strange. But in season two, you can tell they don't have the as the amount of resources probably needed to have a full fledged war um, when it comes to this you know fall of reach type of thing um but what they did give us in these action scenes were pretty solid i also loved uh you know the the combat that we saw between the marines um the spartans and the elites uh, and the other covenant members those are you know that to me and even they gave some easter eggs for some big halo fans with some of the vehicles that we saw in this episode so that was uh to me the the strongest aspect of this now do i think it's vastly better than anything we saw i thought the midway of season one was probably pretty good too but this definitely feels like it's uh on that level um from what we we're expecting and uh you know the writing part we'll get into things that i don't love but some of the conversations and and some of the surprises that you'll actually get in this episode uh, might surprise some fans yeah and i felt like the uh the pacing was was solid i mean there were some definite things that that pissed me off about how they would transition to certain scenes that slowed it down the yeah, best aspect of yeah, the, the best aspect of this episode was the combat. So I felt like keeping along with the combat and the tense situations made this episode really good. And and there was not as many fades away from that. There were, but not as much. And, and no Quan means it's auto an auto a great episode. I mean, that's already it's already a big bonus on my book. Um, but yeah, I feel like they did a good job with the overall pacing and just feel of this episode, um, especially because we it was hyped up they had the last one. There's a bad thing's gonna happen, and they they really did hit that hard here. Now with the good, we do need to talk about the bad, and and I think the bad part, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna uh, you know, talk about the spoilers section here because that's obviously for, for later on. But there are some major plot holes that this episode does create, and it does hurt the overall effect of the episode itself. I mean, like I, I'm not gonna go into spoilers, but there are several lines that just make you cringe. There's several things that happen that shake your head. Um, there are things that if you are looking at this from the standpoint of 
um, as a Halo fan. And, you know, even if this was a completely different universe, which they already said, it's a silver timeline, I get it. He, like, a lot of people say that, hey, this is like the equivalent of Marvel's What If, right? That's like that, that the equivalent to that. But at the same time, even in Marvel's What If, or in a separate timeline, the characters are consistent. So the characters in this case do not really act in the same type of situations that they normally would be in the game. So that's why it kind of hurts that component. And, I, and you know, I praise the writing of this season is definitely better than last season. But at the same time, there are some really stupid decisions making that they do in, in a lot of the really small things, but they eventually become bigger things. And I feel like that's kind of the biggest problem I've seen with this episode, not just this one, but it's kind of like a, a snowball effect. Multiple things are causing this to kind of get worse and worse. And uh, the basic writing is is like, it's like a kindergartner. Like you, you you can write this better, right? And you could salvage bad direction with better writing to like at least get things to make more sense. And it felt like they just kind of, felt like this rush. It was like a rush, like, oh, we just need to come up with a reason why you know, like, by the way, there's no armor. So Spartans aren't wearing armor in this episode. So why? We'll talk about that. Too. But like, it's just they just find a way to make that answer and it makes no sense. But Langella Hill, what is a bad thing? About this? Yeah, the major plot points, Um, some of them just they feel like they suck. Um, They just, you know, like they can obviously change. It seems they're long and they try to make sense of why they go in these directions. But it just I don't. It's hard to see right now, and uh, some of those decisions, you know, with the CGI stuff um, and some of the gunplay, you know, it felt like everything was an automatic weapon um, in this, and and some of the flashes did look a little bit uh, unusual when you go back and rewatch it. Um, yeah. Didn't bother me like the first time, but when you go back and start, but I don't want to nitpick on that because the, there's much more problems than the gunplay, right? And it's it's some of these plot holes that really have you scratching your head, and some of the choices made, you know, and it's like trying to create. You know the shock value to the audience which at you need that you know to get that you know feeling in a show about like oh my god i can't believe that happened that that emotional attachment but it just doesn't make sense on why some of those choices are made yeah and hockey what was a bad thing that you felt about this episode yeah for me i mean i i thought i was gonna see you know literally the fall of reach and and the battle that i thought the fall of reach was gonna be and for me I, it was just disappointing I, I didn't i didn't feel like i uh, uh you know was respected as a Halo fan, and I'm sure you guys weren't uh, as, as bigger fans than I am. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the the biggest thing that kind of sticks out is the story. Uh, it's kind of all over the place, kind of like Langella said, you can't really nail it down right now. I thought they were going to be going in a different direction, or I thought the writing was going well, and then we saw Maquis, you know, in, in the earlier episodes, and that kind of blew up something. So um, there's just a lot of holes that I don't know how they're going to fill, and they're probably going to fill it with just dumb stuff like they've been doing. Yeah, it feels like they kind of doubled down on the, you know, this is a separate timeline. And then they just said, well, you know what? We took it in certain directions. We're just going to keep going and even, even take it to a degree where a lot of people are going to be really upset or in some cases people are excited about it. And I think when we get to our final verdict, I, I do want to talk about a mixture of my my feeling of this episode as well as my feeling about the reactions to it. And I'll let you guys obviously give your ratings when, before we get to that point. But when I'm looking at this episode, the action I think is great. The animation was very good. I mean, there were some things that are a little off, but I and I, I will give them credit for fixing up the animations to make it look really uh, thorough and, and fluid. And the pacing I thought was solid. There were some issues, but overall it was way better paced compared to a lot of other episodes they've done so far in this season. Um, but the plot holes make this episode not an amazing Halo episode, but probably a good sci-fi episode and i feel like the if you wanted war you wanted death you wanted combat you're gonna get that it just feel like it was it was kind of a not really that consistent to what i wanted to see overall but even with that being the case this episode is probably like an 8.5 for me i feel like it's a it's probably the best episode they've had all season probably the best episode they've had the entire show i mean the other most equivalent would be the midway of last season um, because it had a lot of action. The writing was was pretty much solid to the to a certain extent. Um, but there are some s clear flaws, right? And I feel like that's kind of something that I saw right away. Um, but Hockey, what is your final verdict here? Yeah, so I got it a little bit lower. I still think it is the best episode of this season. I don't think it tops possibly even two episodes of the first season. Um, but 
Look, I think the best thing that they've done is, uh, you know, the look of the equipment, the weapons, both on the, you know, UNSC and the Covenant side and the vehicles that we've seen as well. So, you know, they've nailed down some really good things. Uh, um, but yeah, it's it's really the writing for me right now. I I'm just mad that I'm not getting the Halo show that I think all of Halo fans deserve. Um, so, yeah, I mean, right now, I, I what did I say? I think a seven. Did I say seven nine. Did I give my verdict yet? No, uh, I guess yeah, it's seven nine. Seven, yeah. seven, it's, nine. Not a, it's not an eight yet. It hasn't reached into the eight. Um, but yeah, it's a seven nine. I mean, it, it can just be way better. And I'm disappointed at this point after this episode, at least. Angelica, what is your final rating here? I'm very torn um, because a lot of people, and I, I know that you're going to get that in the next segment um, before we dive into spoilers about kind of everyone's reaction. Um, I feel like people have kind of been hurt so bad by the show, especially season one, that sometimes we look at some of these episodes like on a on a curve, like for grading on a curve, and, and that's kind of where you have to step back. And I think you kind of nailed it that as a sci-fi episode, I think this is actually good to pretty good um, episode but as a halo episode it's a step back like it's not you know i came in here last week super excited for those that watch they've heard me say that i was very excited to watch this episode and i leave today after watching it not as excited um and a little bit disappointed so with that said i don't blame people if they think that this is the best episode the show has made because there isn't a lot you know that you can hammer as being great um so i am going to go with a flat eight and i think that is the same grade i gave the midway point for season one i think on combat wise it was very well choreographed i think the elites look better than they have ever looked before um but preventing this from getting to what i'm seeing on a lot of people saying like elite status um the the some of the decision making is painful it is painful for a halo fan and so that i'm gonna go flat eight yeah, and I kind of want to use that as our jumping point to the discussion before we head to the spoiler, spoiler kind of discussion, is that a lot of people were split about how they would feel about this episode going forward, whether it is the, you know, the overzealous fan of Halo with the defense of the show, saying that this is a completely different universe, you know, like, hey, this is actually great writing and how they're explaining that certain events are happening and that... You know, people are just being haters, and that's why they're throwing shade at this, at this Paramount Plus version of Halo, right? And then there's the other section, which is really hey, fans of the games that are looking for a, I guess you would say they're looking for what, like, The Last of Us did, right? Where they look at the games and they say, we're going to try to keep this as close as yeah, possible, and it's not happening, so they're really upset. And this is just, like, a culmination of that because of specific events that happened in this episode. We'll get to that later on, but... I, I want to kind of address that, yes, can I understand giving Paramount Plus a chance? I, I I get that in the first season. I understand. That's like the feeling I had going into the show. But then when we start getting into like the nap, and this is a full season's in, now we're halfway at season two, and they are completely just going forward with a destruction of a lot of the story components that were from the games and even furthering some of the issues of character writing and i feel like that's something that bothers me with what paramount plus is doing is that they're kind of breaking even further away from the mold and i feel like that's where i'm gonna rag on them because i feel like they have a opportunity to do something really good when it comes to writing characters right and, and you can create your own universe but the basic premise is keep the characters as closely to the games as much as possible because that's what the fans are going to going to relate to. They're not going to relate to a Master Chief that's completely different. They're not going to relate to a Keys that's completely different. Or all of a sudden now you're introducing new characters that are no almost like about. that no one cares about and then mm -hmm. you're almost elevating them higher than characters that care. are that we know and love, right? Like I granted, I know this new Arbiter character is may not be Thel Vadam, but he is similar to that character and now you're making this maki character like she is above that person like in in the level of authority and decision making and things like that and you're like that doesn't make any sense why would this human be that level of person right in this story it makes no sense especially with the covenant it doesn't right and that is a fault from the first season's writers as well as current season's writers because they could have they could have straight up on uh, Star Wars level of like, let's just wipe out every story plot 
that the previous director and writer did. And then let's just make our own story going forward. They could have done that and I probably would have respected them more. But they were like, yes, I dislike certain components you did, like the magical, completely respectable decision. And then they wow. said, let's keep the Quan and Maki characters and almost elevate them to a certain degree. And that's where I'm looking at them like, why do you think that's the thing to keep Doubling versus, down. Yeah, versus the other yeah. stuff that you rightfully got rid of, right? That's where I don't really understand. So it's kind of like that, you know, that like I, I can I can understand the defense, but like give them a shot. I get that. But I feel like for me, they've used that chance multiple times. So it's like I can't keep giving them a mulligan every time they do something stupid because it's like you yeah. ran out of that mulligan already. So I understand that perspective, but I'm also going to say I'm a been a fan of the games the entire time. So yeah. I've been around, watched every media that they've ever done. I can I can be critical of their dumb decisions like that. I, we could do that. Um, I want to give you guys like a moment to kind of give your own feelings about the talk. You can go first here. What, what was your kind of feeling about that that split the debate over this this show? Yeah, so I'm on the side of uh, the Last of Us uh, people, I guess. I um I, I can't believe they kind of did what what they did. Uh, they completely destroyed the character of Master Chief. I know Langella Hill and Humor's Man, you, you've said it a, a bunch of times as well, uh, but that is not Master Chief. That is, you know, a completely different character. If they wanted to give Paramount a shot to make a Halo show uh, and they wanted to do the Silver Timeline, you know, follow Cobalt Team, follow a different Spartan team, do ODST, do something, but what they did was a complete disgrace, and I think I'm just sick from the first season, kind of how, you know, Langella Kill uh, was, was pointing out, that people are kind of sick from the first season. And, uh, you know, I want it to be a Halo show, and it's just not, and every single time I see Master Chief without his helmet on, I want to barf. So I'm on the side of, uh, you know, it's definitely not a 9 or, or even a high 8 for me. Um, until they kind of get back to where I believe they should be, uh, you know, then, then it's that, that's going to be my reasoning. But I don't, unfortunately, I don't think they're going to get back to that. So, well, Angelica, what's your feeling about this debate? I know that on, online there's been quite a lot yeah. of uh, fist fights yeah, going on, and, and there's there's even content creators who I respect a lot that that really praise this episode. Um, and I just I think it's just grading on a curve. I think you're grading on a curve like this is a Halo criteria, Halo Paramount Plus criteria, and on that scale, yeah, it looks feels like a nine, feels like a ten. But like, if you take a step back and look at it through the lens of just a normal show, it, it's not that. Now it was very solid, but um, not great. And those ugliness, it just feels like it's gonna get worse. Like those ugliness is just festering right now, and I don't know how they correct that going forward. It just feels bad. Um, and not the fall of reach bad, like, you know, like just the, the overall show is going to get hurt by it in, in my feeling. Um, and, you know, that's it's unfortunate. They're doubling down on some bad decisions. And it's, you know, first season writers and directors, I felt completely disengaged from the game people. Right. Like it was almost it was disrespectful um, how they felt like towards the game. This one is not as disrespectful, but they do have an arm's length distance between us and the games right like they're still keeping their distance and that's kind of like the damn i really wish they were going to get a little bit closer and i don't think that's happening yeah you know like the first season when we found out that they that they did not play a single game before making yeah. this show like it was clear and evident that that was the case and it feels like i don't think anyone in season two's writers or directors played the game either i feel like they you know they they might have gotten some of the feelings right or from just by maybe yeah, looking it's not, at some it's media. disrespectful, but it's not as close as what it's, we were. It's just like, yeah, you know, like you had a chance to fix things and maybe they felt like they, they shouldn't have fixed everything, but you know, it's just like a give and take. So with that being said, if you are interested in any of our other episodes, we have a whole list of Halo show reviews we've done to this point. So you can go check those out on the channel. But if you like this type of content, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe, support the channel. Were you interested in watching this show going forward? Let us know what you think in the comments below. But stick around because we're going to jump into our spoiler discussion and we're going to head there right now. So we are here, spoiler discussion, guys. And, and what I'm going to kind of do is kind of talk about some major points of the plot that happened from the first half in, into the second half. And then we're going to kind of just give our overall feeling about it. Um, any things that we see that we like or dislike going forward. So. When the, when the start of this episode happens, it was right after the you know chief and Perez were sitting in that church, and mass happens. We kind of felt like there was a very like 
kind of dumb way to, to introduce that uh, no the covenant but once they did they were destroying everybody and and even perez's family who we were introduced in the last episode is assumingly dead like now granted they might they, they might be alive you don't know they probably are they got bombs. You know, i don't yeah, know they got bombs. Yeah. Everyone, everyone's they're getting they're blown, blown up and everything so i mean that that part was a pretty important scene because it sets the stage for like you know the whole like rest of the fall of reach happening but we right from there we're jumping into like the the sore and halsey so like some of the times i've noticed that they had some really like slow like pacing events that just like slow down the timing and every time they kept showing like halsey and soren it was almost like their way to slow down the action and i don't really understand why they're pacing it this way because of the fact that the first scene was so good in setting up that that situation and then they jumped to soren halsey interesting situation but one of the things i hated about it was the fact that you know they start talking to each other about like oh uh, i thought i thought the one line that soren says about like oh i thought you'd be bigger it was kind of showing like he's not really afraid of her right but at the same time it was also discussion how like halsey let him get away it was like what yeah. there weren't any guards there and he's just like yeah. oh i guess perfect. you're right like i'm sorry but like stop like that's such crap that's such a crap like oh and then the soren's like yeah you're not that bad like no like no like i know the soren is not a bad character but the writing is so stupid. You could you could make Halsey a bad guy. It's okay. She is messed up. So Soren escaping her clutches. Yeah, like that's that's fine. You don't have to make it where it's like, you know what? I let you get away because I want you to live a life. And no, you didn't. Then why didn't you do that for the blind guy? Why didn't you do that for everybody else? You didn't because you don't care. You're not a good person. Like that's the point. Like you you doing it for your thinking that it's the right thing to do. But you're wrong. So that's just, yeah. that's just something that they and like. And again, that's like the season one. That was actually one of the things that in season one that we're, we're trying to, you know, follow at least closer is like Soren escaping and, and, you know, Chief trying was going to escape and then he was actually going to turn him in. Right. And that was kind of the disconnect between the two um, at that time. But then in this now they're saying, actually, you know, that event really didn't happen. Right. No, like, no, blowing like up, they didn't like speak blowing out. Chief point. wasn't. Chief wasn't in turmoil and then turning on Soren. It actually, they just let him go, you know. Like, it's just yeah. How, you were gonna, you were at it. I was just saying they're, they're just blowing up storylines that like actually for no reason. Sense, yeah, know? like it's just, no they're just doing it. Just the, just the. I, I, it's like like they're just trying to make Halsey seem like she's really not that bad. Like no, she she is. Like she is a bad person. And it's okay to be angry with her. Like she is not a great character, right? So like, as in great, she's not a good person. She's a good yeah. character, but just not a good person. And then we jump right back to the action where every, everything's dying and like Perez kind of has one of those moments where she's like you know uh, you know chief like everyone's dying around how do you how do you deal with this and then one of the dumb things that happens is that through all the death and turmoil chief Which sits there cool. all that was all cool by the not, way all the, not, not downgrading that it, yeah. the downgrade Nothing comes in yet. where after everything's happening around you chief then goes you know when I was a kid you know this woman kept flipping a coin in front of me and I kept getting it right and she's like, oh, you know, you're, you're, I guess it's called lucky. He's like, no, it's not luck. I just, I just know when things are going to happen. Like, just like when everyone else is going to die around me, I just know that I'm not going to die. Like, that's one of the dumbest lines. How did they, you, how did they go together like that? It doesn't, it that doesn't make any sense. Like a coin flip to, I just know I'm not going to die. Like, that's not, that's not the same thing. Like that it's like, it was almost like they set up where she like, oh, that's lucky. Because that was one of the things that, like, from the games, he was just, he was lucky. That's what he, he had. Was, he was, he, he had one thing he that was better than anybody stuff, else. And he Look. always comes out, yeah, comes he always comes out of it. I was like, yeah, one of the, it was, it was Halo 3 was literally, that's how it starts. It was yeah. like, Cortana, like, you were lucky. No one else was that lucky as you yeah, were. I think he said could be, right? He didn't say no. Yeah, yeah, I think he said could, I could be. be. Could be. I, I just know, know that I'm not gonna die. Everyone's really? gonna die around me, and I'm not. Like, <laughs> like, stop. Like, you know. And Although then, like, you almost died. Apparently, when they were trying to remove Cortana, you almost died. They had to remove Cortana, or he would have died at the start of the season. Yeah, he almost died right away. And started the And then we'll get to the end where he also gets. You know, we'll, we'll get to the end. Yeah, and and I mean, right from that, like, really stupid like conversation, but then jumps right to the uh, chief tackling the elite like and i thought that was a good that scene was good. it was a it was a yeah. fight that was more like i said before in the non-spoiler review it seemed better choreographed it didn't seem yeah. fake right and i felt like they actually did a pretty good job at like 
just it, it was a good planned moment and the, the the atmosphere is good and yeah you know what chief not wearing armor you know it made it where like yes he the art the elite was giving them some shots so it kind of yeah. says that hey and when he's not at a full armor, he is kind of now. Well, yeah, down it's supposed to be a challenge armor. even with armor, yeah. right? So it's supposed to be yeah. a challenge with armor. I thought it was that 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 was that was a great scene in my opinion. I love that scene. Yeah, and it just like it sets up that these these covenant are not weak, right? And I feel like that's kind of a good thing. And and so then then we get to like obviously later on when Chief finally is is able to uh, you know talk about. I feel like at that point when Chief finally gets back with you know getting close to Fleet Com, I feel like that was. That was where like the action really started to pick up again because now he's back to the home base he's back with riz he's back with with vanek he's back with uh the blind uh blind spartan i forgot his name i think it was lauren or something it was like it was like i forgot what it is so something along those lines mm -hmm. and um you know that's where we start getting some real action all the spartans are here fighting's getting worse i really wish i could have saw like Varric actually shoot more guns to this point like you would think um <laughs> what Every gun is apparently fully automatic, which I don't really understand, especially if it's like a battle rifle and a DMR. I know there's a commando in the Halo Infinite, and I know that there's like, <laughs> there's variants of the battle rifle that are fully automatic, but at the same time, they're just, every gun is automatic. Like, it doesn't matter. It could be a pistol. I thought it was shooting like automatically yeah, as well. Yeah, there's not fun variants in this. In this there's, no, there's no Glock that's like yeah. flying bullets or whatever, but like at the end of the day, like it, those little things I always get annoyed with, but I think that they had some pretty cool moments um and i think one of the craziest had to be the fact that like uh, i think it was lorenzo or something like that he was the the blind spartan um he had a grenader and he was blowing people up and i thought and and i think a lot of people like angel joe said this i think i was thinking it too he's blind right and he's straight up clapping people like as a blind spartan and i'm like yeah you know he's an elite soldier i know he's he's weakened and everything but at the same time it's like he is blind like we are we do realize that this is a blind spartan just sniping with rockets across the map like that's a hard you know that's a hard thing to do for anybody let alone this guy who's like legit right and he's a um, daredevil man daredevil and 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 it shows you death is happening often because his husband dies and then he yeah. says you know you're gonna go without me i'll i'll take care of it because then we see the wraith show yeah, up yeah baby and the first time we see a wraith like ever in the show and i'm like there we go now we're getting some some vehicles in here and um, it looked pretty good. It didn't look at anything bad. And it, you know, he's like, I'll, I'll take care of this. And he takes his grenade and his grenades and he just starts walking toward the green screen. And then he just gets destroyed. <laughs> he's slowly, just slowly walking toward up. the green screen like this. Up. Even though I think one of the funniest things is that like, I would have rather him like hijack the wraith and just like take yeah. the thing That's out the and die and then die. And then it just blows up. Um, yeah. I think I'd rather that happen. Or the hijack, uh, yeah, and he puts the green on and doesn't get off on time. He doesn't get off off time and it blows like, up. Like I'd that. rather that, like, because at yeah. least it's like a little bit more like cool. more nuggets accurate, for the yeah, fans. For the fans. A little bit more There's nuggets something. for the fans, you know what I'm saying? Because I, because yeah. hockey, I think you mentioned to us before, like you know the you know you could have easily just splattered him and it would have been fine. That would have been like, hilarious. He just, if he just <laughs> zoomed in and just blows, runs him over, like his. It's just like little things like that. Like it doesn't make sense. Like why would you just? Why could you just add that in there to give a little bit of nugget? Um, but that's kind of like the first half. That a lot of action, a lot of good things I saw. Um, some stupid things, but overall I felt like that first half was relatively strong. Was there, was there anything you guys saw that like you liked the most from this first half? And I'll go with Linjilla Kill this time. Uh, anything that you liked from that first half? Um, this uh, Halsey and. When Halsey and Soren didn't get out of the prison, they cell. were they were leaving. They leave the prison. They leave the prison cell by that first day. And they day. found Cortana. They not yet. They, okay. This is yeah. We're this is right. So second. they yeah okay. they, yeah. That's the yeah. second start. Basically. First half. I'll out. say this. Some of the sets were great. Seeing the wrath, the wraith was great. Getting to see some of these Spartans fight. Um, all that stuff was good. You've seen a lot of death go around you. This is what war is, right? So you know that that's. That's the stuff that they nailed, and I liked, you know, the interactions and stuff like that. Now I do know, yeah, the blind Spartan, you know, going his dare, he went daredevil mode, you know, can can feel everyone around him even though he can't see, um, you know, that that's a little corny, but you know what, I was okay with it. Like it didn't bother me that much. But the big thing and the big plot hole was the supposed armor being gone, right? And that's kind of the 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 really big. Uh, big moment there is that the 
Ackerson took the Spartan armor and they don't have the armor. Um, and a lot of people debating this, you know, why would Ackerson do this? And they talk about there's his hatred for Spartan twos. So they were, he was trying to sabotage them, that he was taking the valuable assets. But the armor is not valuable without the Spartan in it. So I don't know the value of taking armor without the Spartan. Um, so I don't understand the decision. Mm -hmm. If they're trying to set him up to fail, um, then why, you know, we didn't see Kai this episode. You know, why take Kai? And there's other Spartan two groups, right? We just know of uh, Master Chief's group, but there are other Spartan twos that are supposed to be on this planet. Did they sabotage all of them or is it just this group itself? So I, I people making that case to me, we'll get to the second part, which I don't know how anyone can defend um, with another Ackerson decision. But uh, the Spartan armor thing, I guess you can fight with it, but it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, Hockey, what did you feel about that first half? Yeah, I thought the action was good. You know, doubling down with what you guys said. Um, I love how they got uh, a lot of invisible elites. You know, I think that's yeah, a, a lot. Really <laughs> aspect. You know, a lot of them. Yeah. They all got swords and everything, which I don't know if everyone should have swords, but um, you know, it's um, uh, you know, it's something that again the fans like to see. That you know, it's something that uh, you see in the games. Um, you know, the combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat with Master Chief and the Elite, very good in combat in general. I said it before, seeing the vehicles and all the guns, probably the best part of, uh, you know, the show just in general. Uh, but yeah, the two, uh, you know, the thing that kind of uh, was bad for me was my two favorite characters, or one of my two favorite characters, Soren and Halsey, Marcelio kind of hit it. Uh, they kind of just, their, their interaction was a little weird, a little strange, uh, and it I mean, Marcelio literally nailed it. It slowed down the action almost to a halt whenever they change from high octane action to, you know, Halsey uh, you know, and Soren kind of running through hallways and having weird conversations. Yeah, and it, like it wasn't intensified, right? The, no, they yeah. kind of teased it last episode, like, oh, this is going to be a big conflict. I thought I was going to see a other. big conflict, yeah. Right? But you just didn't feel that. Didn't see it, no. Yeah, they, they kind of just like, they use it as a method to like slow down the action, but like, there's no, why do you need to do that? Like, and have good could, dialogue, right? Then have good yeah. dialogue. And yeah, I mean, like, I, I just don't, you could have made like the Halsey Soren part, like one scene that had like all of that stuff happen. You know what I mean? Like the talk, then to them transitioning to like the next half, because that's going to start with Halsey and Soren get to where Cortana is, and then, oh, zoop. Um, how about you like eh, eh, I got it I just I know you guys were there like took out the Cortana piece and yeah, just run. walks out and in comes in you comes in comes the Arbiter walking in you know strolling in and he's gonna start clapping people and they just peace out I mean obviously there's like uh, some intensity that's going on but they got to get out of there and one of the dumbest things is that like just like Lejolkil said if, if Ackerson is taking the armor and Ackerson is like trying to save all their assets then why aren't you taking the most important asset which is Cortana, which is literally the most important thing that the UNSC has at this point, because it's their first ever like, and uh, you know, AI Ancilla that is levels by beyond humans, right, in mental cap capabilities. Like, and I feel like that is something that for Ackerson to not bring with him is the dumbest. In, in the game, reach the game. That was the whole mission was to get Halsey and Cortana, specifically Cortana, off the planet. So, like, because that's what the the elites were going after for a while. They were going after the you know after the Cortana AI, and because they were they heard they, they investigated and knew that she was on the planet and they can use her to their benefit, right? And and that was kind of the whole point. Like, so it's like, why would he leave that stuff behind? And now, granted, what I think is important about the second half is that like, so now you're starting to get that feeling of like, you know, this is near, this is like. You know you're screwed right they're essentially screwed and this is where you get the key speech keys is like hey you know what you're right chief uh i saw their dead bodies really right after we had that conversation and <laughs> you're right bro and it was kind of like thank god we just like, skipped over that because i felt like that was one of the dumbest plot lines i thought overall but here's my he was the dumber thing about it he's like yeah you know um you know two of the spartans didn't even know what was coming and they got wiped out instantly they like they like and they all of them have their armor so like so taking the armor away only makes it like worse Mark. like it feels like it feels like yeah. at that point it just feels like <laughs> like what well, they don't even need the armor to like you know they, like, why are you taking that like every armor is 
specifically made for that yeah, particular Spartan. that Spartan. Like no one else yeah. could use it. So it's like, why take it? Right? It's just just to be a douche. Then like th then that kind of goes against what Ackerson's character, like his character that they've developed in the last episode, was that he thinks he's doing right by humankind. Right? Yeah, he so, hates Spartan twos and Halsey, but like yeah, but like he realizes doesn't make yeah, like the armor taking doesn't make sense. It's just like unless it, he's it, sabotaging. His goal like was to protect his goal was to protect humankind and like how do you do that like how do you do that if your kosher child master chief is dead like this how does that help isn't that what part of his like main thing was like we need you as the image like to get everybody because that's what he uses they'll build a spartan 3 program it's like hey you want to be like the master chief you want to be like a guy that like fought and, and saved you guys like be like him right that's why like i understand he doesn't want the chief to like die but that's why like i don't understand why he took away the armor but, like it only makes it easier to kill him right that's kind of the point so it's like i don't really understand like all that dumb yeah. dumbness there yeah, and can i just add this one thing before everyone um in halo the games and i don't want to I, I feel bad spoilers but it's been out for a long time guys uh, if you haven't played reach the mission of reach like mars said there was two is to get cortana off um and get cortana to master chief on the autumn's uh the pillar of autumn yeah um and this episode was the opposite of that mission it's leave both of them there to die right what's, like the opposite what's the what's <laughs> the brain funny. cells that that says that that's a good idea like it's just like it doesn't make sense and that's why i know that these writers didn't play the game like because if you did or even if you read the book like i find you don't like video games fine go read the fall of reach book that that's all the evidence you need to know what you should yeah. be putting into this story i mean that's it's crazy but then we get the uh, probably one of the better parts was the keys you know like uh speech which which was a good speech it was basically saying hey you know we got to hold the line you know we're holding the line here to save as many people as possible and you're probably gonna die but at least you go out in the blaze of glory like fighting for something bigger than yourself hey we even got parts here with no armor like he like he just says hey chief doesn't even need armor to fight i'm like he kind of does like he, he definitely does he definitely <laughs> needs <laughs> armor i think if, if anyone needed if anyone wanted the armor they would use it like it's not like they don't need it so yes he does need it so yeah but it does get like everyone riled up and he straight up it's almost like ver verbatim like the story of thermopylae where it's like they have one spot they could attack through and we got to hold the line and hopefully survive and and so they start and this is a cool moment where it was like even chief was like all right like shoot the Mac cannon in that direction. And then you, once they fire, you see all the elites like sprinting toward that spot. And you're like, all right, there we go. And now they start battling, but then they're getting attacked up, up, up by jackals, which I'm sorry to say this guys, the jackals look absolutely god off. Like they look, they look garbage. I, it's like, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting crocodiles like are fighting. We're getting, we're getting like crab mixed with crocodiles are fighting up top and it makes Crocodile no people. sense it makes zero sense like you could like the, the dudes look like beef cakes. like they're all like beefy crocodiles and you're like like no like it's like just look at the game man like i know everyone like I, people used to rag on like three for three in their depictions of jackals in the halo 4 which weren't really great but like damn you look at that look at what we have here this is even 10 times worse than what three for three chains and like, it's just like, damn, look at the recent game. Look at Infinite. Look at Halo, previous Halo games. Like, just match that. You don't need to come up with your own version of a Jackal. I mean, you didn't have a Jackal in, as that as that one character, the pirate character in the first season. Yeah, it doesn't mean you got to make them look yeah. like crocodiles in this one. You know what I mean? It just doesn't, I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. But when they get attacked, one of the scenes that I think makes me ballistic um, was Keys' death. And I'm sorry to, you know... This is a We're this in the is, spoiler section, man. So, so we I'm, are. And, and and so when it comes to like how he goes out, it was a good send-off. Yeah. But at the same time, it just tells me that once he died, I was like, that means you're going away from the story entirely. Like because he was part of that first group on the Halo room. Like he dies in Halo One. Like, so you're breaking away from that completely and you know, and he went out on the blaze of gore. Yeah, that's great and all. But like at the same time, it's like he died and he's not supposed to die here. You know, so I kind of get nervous about that because I'm like, if they're willing to get rid of Keys, who is a pivotal character 
then what the hell are they going to start changing next? Yeah, yeah and, that's and what talk gets about me. how the death happened. They, you know, the fuel, uh, the the fuel line was still plugged into the ship. They couldn't take off. Perez, a bunch of uh, civilians, and Keys was on that ship. So Keys, you know, is the one that decides to go unplug it, um, and that's what ends up. You know, he gets surrounded and they punch it and blow up the whole. Uh, you know, yeah, any guy's got a light. Yeah, a- and that's a cool line. That's a really cool line. But again, how about the trade-off? Right? Didn't it feel like a perfect moment for Perez to do this? I know. Like, family I, just kinda, passed away. Like, I know. I, I feel like why is it? Is it- that, like, why was the trade-off that? That's the part. Unless your plan is to make like, the main character. I just don't. I don't understand. Perez is getting this push. She's getting this big push. Yeah. She hasn't done anything. She's literally, she basically she's was lied. a part. That she's she lied. And avoid, yeah, yeah, avoid telling the truth. Yeah. Right? She's done all these things that are not good characters. She, she didn't even say that she's the reason Cobalt Team died because she lied. And they sent, right? They, how about, they sent how about Chief? Team? Chief was looked like a, like a clown. He was yeah, squad. They, they got, they hey, got she got was it. the reason why Kai doesn't trust Chief. Like, yeah. if she straight yeah. up said, Oh yeah, Maki's yeah, alive. Covenant's I saw the lady. And, I, and Covenant's here. Like, can no, we like, just like good. Covenant is here? Yeah. Yeah. Like, any of that stuff, just like, and so she's now getting this ultra push to be a good guy. She's not. I don't like. I mean, she's way better than Quan and Maki. I mean, yeah, sure, I, I, I'll give you that. But like, we're talking about Garbo levels of characters to like that. I mean, yeah, anyone can win. The, the the jackal character from the season one could be better than that. So I mean, <laughs> anything's better than that. So. <laughs> I want to get to the final part, which is the final fight scene. And it, it kind of stinks because the, the Spartans weren't there to see Keys go out in the blaze of glory. Um, so they show up and then all of a sudden, then you see Big Boy Big Boy Arbiter show up. And, he, and he's definitely the best character of the show so far, right? He's the best, he's overall show. Walks in and he just starts like, I'm, I'm going to start fighting. In the hallway, and, and great he, fight with keeping them. Keeping him like, oh, exactly. oh, mano, mano like sprinting right at each other and like they have a good like one-on-one fight but like and then like obviously he's like he he kind of whacks chief back and then he's ready to go and then you're and then chief gets jumps at him they're about to do superman punch and gets shot in the rib cage right or a rib cage or arm i can't tell right here, and right here. yeah like something like that in the shoulder arm whatever and then like the elite like i wasn't mad about the elite thing like where it's like he like slices the dude's head off because oh, cool. the whole the whole like part of that is that the elites are like very they're like close to like samurai like they're big into honor like and that's like their fighting is like part of their like honor code yeah and, like, and he wanted the that, glory to, to he wanted yeah. an even fight and be the glory like to win as an even fight yeah um, yeah a better warrior. He, that took that away from him. yeah he was like yeah. he wants to live a warrior's life and then like He's like, whatever, he walks up to, he's about to kill, and then you get, no, stop, and it's Maquis, like, stopping everything, and even the Elite, like, gave the same look I I gave while watching, like, look back at her, like, like, what did you and just, what did she say? She says, not, not now. Yet. Yeah, not yet. And he's just like, what, why not? Like, I, I wanted, I wanted to say for him, but he kind of just gave her, like, the side eye, like, Okay, and then he just turns around and just, just walks out. Like I just don't. Yeah, but, I, but before he walks out, what? Yeah, what? What is the big event that happens? So, so Ver, uh, Vanek, obviously he's trying to save like his boy. He sprints out, and I know a lot of people like debated like how they like this, how stupid. death or not. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't mind his reasoning because he was like, you know, he does not to kill Chief before. I think it may be a little smidgen late in him doing it. I feel like it was like he should have ran in before she says stop like he should have ran in to st- uh, try to uh, kill him and, yeah. and then yeah, yeah. he stabs him and then that's where like he's like no and then that and then she says stop that i'm not gonna like the stop part but i would have liked the yeah. fact that like and maybe you could have made it where like vanek could have maybe damaged the elite and maybe that he has to retreat well he actually like, did though right so he shot him a little bit he shot he, him and the needle went the into out. him he ripped yeah. it out took that out and stabbed him with it, it. With it right? and then he got yeah. yeah and then he, then he got super com- uh, combined yeah. and they flew back and died now i didn't think the fact that him dying i called that he was gonna die i actually he called did. that there was there was going he to died. be yeah. members that would die in this fight because so. because they're trying to give off the spartans are dying in all of reach which is i'm perfectly yeah, okay with that's happened yeah. i'm okay that's with that i just think that they could have did uh vanek a little bit better 
and and having him like feel more realistic that the chief is about to die and he says i gotta save my boy and that's what causes him to get stabbed and die right and then obviously still gonna get the stupid stop part but at least then vanek would like it makes more a little more sense he like waited it was like he waited until like after the fact like like he was getting stopped that's why everyone's like oh no she's about to get killed and that's the point like it doesn't really make sense in that time span right especially it was after she says no no not now like yeah that's where I, i'll say sense. this yeah i want i want haki to jump in here but i just yeah, want yeah. to say this i'm actually going to defend them on that last scene and i want to dive into a couple other parts but on that last scene what if vanek is attacking the elite as an opening because he turned his back to try to take down the leading officer of the of the covenant right so yeah. to me like a lot of people are saying he's trying to get revenge on chief he thinks chief got killed you know and like in that mindset yeah that kind of looks stupid because they just stopped he could have made sure he was dead and he didn't do it. he walked away right but maybe it's an he was looking at it as an opening to kill a, a yeah. high officer yeah of yeah. the company yeah right so in my that's how i viewed it watching it originally and that he just failed doing it um so like that's why i'm not completely against what they did there yeah hockey what did you feel about that like that that last part of vanek's death yeah, so I thought Vanek's death was fine. Um, I thought it, pretty much like you said, I thought it could have been done a little bit better. Um, and I'm with you guys with Key's death. Um, you know, I had Langelic Hill kind of go over what happened in Halo uh, 1 with me and, and what Key's role was, and it was huge. So them kind of nuking that, if he is, you know, dead, I mean, we didn't it kind of cut, but we assume that he's dead, but nobody, no death, right? So I mean, we'll see if he's alive. Maki okay, nice Maki survives, so he can survive, but, um, you know, he could have been taken prisoner. We never know. Uh, but I thought the action scenes uh, were, were great. Uh, but the one weird thing I was going to say, and I talked to Langelic Hill uh, off screen about this, was uh, the jackals having like mini swords. Yeah, they yeah. had that in for what season one. Yeah. They yeah. had that in season one. It was kind of yeah. like, that was one of the things I remember Maybe season I one. Remember no, yeah, it was in season one they did that. I remember back then I was like, oh, that's, right. that's not the worst idea because I'm like, I'm surprised they didn't come up with like, knife versions of these swords I mean, but like sword, yeah but i was like yeah all right i i really don't the jackals have like that, swords are like, but like it's like what you no one's got guns like there's only like two guys with like, a plasma pistol and one guy with right. a needler <laughs> it was just like one needler one plasma pistol but everyone's got mini swords and big swords like it's just no, rifle rifles haven't been made yet I, the, the, the elites yeah. only know how to charge an opponent and not not like yeah. shoot them from a distance uh, or something grenades, it's just like yeah. it's just you know it, that part yeah it's kind of like come on now you know I get, but you, they, you guys, hey, yo, what are you guys then two two big plot points Ackerson leaving Cortana that's crazy yeah. and that, that's a lot crazy. of people are fighting over that his hatred for Halsey and Spartan 2s and he just thought that the elites were just going to glass the planet and like that with that being done they're just going to wipe Cortana off the map I, I mean, can't believe this is a a viable thought process the first off, I, I I've got to go back. It's I've like I've I've pulled season one out of my brain because I don't want to remember it. But how did Maki and Cortana meet? And if they didn't meet, that means you know through their attacking their different communication bases, they found out about Cortana. So they obviously, if they're sending elites on the planet, which Ackerson knows that they're on the planet already, like it wasn't a surprise attack that they think they're just gonna blow it up. Like they're on the planet, they're obviously looking for something, and they're looking for Cortana. So why would you just assume they're gonna blow up the planet where Cortana has the complete knowledge of the UNSC? So like your hatred for Halsey and your hatred for Spartan Twos, what does that have to do with having the most valuable asset in UNSC stayed on the planet? You're putting humanity <laughs> at risk because of your hatred yes. for Halsey. No shot. That's not and, his character, you know. So it doesn't make any sense at all. It really yeah. Doesn't. I, I kind of like I, I completely agree because it's kind of like well, if you wanted, if you hated Halsey so much, you want to get rid of Cortana, then why could you just break the chip? Like you know, it's not like it's that hard of a thing. You you took the chip out of yeah. out of Chief. You could have easily just snapped it and just said, no, nah, I don't really care anymore. Or, you know, you could have you could have done that. You could have literally just been like, if that's the point. But the idea is, is that like you know, Ackerson's character is that he believes that what he's doing is best for UNSC and if his whole mindset was to take you know assets with him then why didn't he just bring cortana with him 
right and just kind of keep her there like yeah you know he could have left halsey to die because he hates halsey yeah but i'll bring her most important feature along you know with you us. want these barns to die and you want to try to convince me but the cortana one makes no sense you yeah, really use yeah. cortana to run simulations why the hell wouldn't he bring yeah it's just kind of like you know like she she's a smart she's an important weapon you know Doesn't what's the mean? point what's the point of doing that uh, what why leave her why leave Cortana there? And I feel, and that's the other thing is like, you know, his whole big brain, I, I got big brain. You couldn't surmise that the, cause it, they did meet Maki and Cortana met when, when Chief and her were plowing each other. Like they did meet, I believe. So I think she knew of Cortana He's beforehand. Like, that's what I, yeah, that's what I'm trying to remember. Cause yeah, I know yeah, all I think of she, showed up on the aftermath yeah. of that. And she and she does know remember, Cortana oh, from that. That was when they did. Okay. I think it was uh, after it was that scene in the after scene is like when he kind of she I think she was shown okay. to my. I'm just curious. I, I could be wrong. They... Maybe I'm brain dead, but I think that's what happens. Um. But I. But you know, even in the games, like you know, they 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 found out about yeah, Cortana because yeah, the very other... the very first mission in the Reach game, they were in after the scientists that were ho helping create Cortana. And you show up as Noble Team in the midst of like them trying to find it, and that's why yeah. like the whole fight happens because they're, like that's when you first see the Covenant like officially you call it in because they tried to get their chip and they took the scientist thinking that the guy had it with them, but he didn't, and then they're like that's the whole time that's what they're trying to do. It's just like it's like that's the point. It's like they were trying to get to Katana, and it's just like Akerson. Like, Are you brain dead, bro? Like what's the what's the what's the play? Here? It's like it's not gonna help you. I don't understand like what the whole and and I really it's like it's kind of like this season has shown to me like the the lengths in which people will go to defend Paramount Plus and yeah. to try to like to try to I get it this season's better than the first season I'm not saying yeah. it's not but it's almost like they're trying to talk this season into a Last Something of Us level not, of, of yeah. greatness or close. like or like Edge Runners level of greatness yeah. when it's clearly yeah. not like this no. is not a great TV show like it might be a a, a yeah. solid star trek new discovery like this and might like be the those, those that like watch our show dude like you don't know how bad we want like halo could be an emmy performing oh yeah ip yeah it is with yeah. the right people so like we're yearning for a great halo show you know and you know like that's not the it's not trying to be haters like we are we want it so bad and it doesn't have to be one for one yeah right it doesn't have to do that, but some of these make no sense. And the, the, last, right yeah, no the last part is this Maquis one and keeping Chief alive. Yeah. Is I don't it because understand she's it. thirsty? Like, what other logical reason is there? Uh, listen, I, I'm not going to. He's yeah, thirsty. I'm not going to. I'm not going to speculate into the future because I want us to talk about that when we get there. But the only thing I'm, I'm thinking is that they need both chosen people to be alive to get to the portal like that's the only thing i can think of other than maki wanting another piece of those master cheeks i don't know other than that but that's at some point happy. at some point the arbiter's gotta realize i gotta kill this bitch or else you know i'm gonna be controlled forever like that's that's the only thing i'm thinking of like he's gotta he's gotta take one for the team like if, if, he, knows, if yeah. he dies if he dies this season one thing he's gotta do me a solid and take maki out Take her out, get rid of her, and then if he goes down, he'll go down as a hero. You know, he'll go down as one of the legendary if he gets that accomplished. Because I thought, I thought Kai was that legend, but clearly she sucks at shooting. She's not. She didn't aim for the head. Well, yeah, she didn't aim for the head. Yeah, you're right. She didn't yeah. aim for the head. So she the only for the heart. No. Yep. Like that's the one thing that I I can't give her credit for. But with that being said. What do you think about the Halo show episode four? Do you like it? Do you think it's trash? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.